Hey there, my name is Kate Fakel. I'm Justin Smith. And welcome, welcome to, to Craft, Craft Beer, Beer Fridays. Fridays. Welcome to the second episode of Spooky Month series, Oktoberfest and Pumpkin Beer Thangs. Uh, we're going to do three, of course, beers in the house. Up first, we have Oktoberfest from Yellowhammer. They are located in Huntsville, Alabama, and this is 5.8%. The next up... Do I do the next I one? Oh, one? That's yeah. fine. Uh, that's we so have uh, Cahaba Brewing Company's uh, Oktoberfest Ale uh, from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, didn't have percentage, so I'm going to guess around the same, 5.8 or 6% alcohol by volume. And lastly, we have Dogfish Head Pumpkin Ale. It is from um, Dogfish Head, like I said, from Milton, Delaware. It is 7% ABV, so we're going from light to heavy here. Uh, as you can see... Uh, off white khaki colored head, uh, a nice little orange, mm. light orange hue body. Gorgeous. Like most Mars and Lagers. Yeah. Uh, looking really good. Never had an opportunity to try Oktoberfest from Cahaba. I've had some of their beers mm. and uh, I've always wanted to try this. Uh, yeah, so. I don't think I've tried this either. Ooh, it's very potent as I'm pouring this. Ooh. And these are all so foamy. Nice. I don't know if it's just because I'm terrible at pouring. It's probably because I'm terrible at pouring. Ah. Would you do the honors of opening oh, absolutely. our dogfish uh, head? Oh, absolutely. Where did I put the bubble? Right there. Oh, nice. Awesome. <laughs> Zading. Uh, I'm excited that uh, Kay over here asked me to be a part of this, but oh, also that uh, Dogfish Head Pumpkin is my absolute favorite pumpkin beer. Mm -hmm. Like, there's Southern Tier Pumpkin, there's uh, Cigar City's uh, Imperial Gourd Ale, mm. but this is... Yes. It's very traditional. Uh, Dogfish Head is all about their ingredients. Uh, this is pumpkin, allspice, nutmeg. A lot of your adjunct uh, pumpkin beers use yams and not actual pumpkins. It and it's is. perfect to cook with too. I did an episode where I made mac and cheese and cooked with Dogfish Head and it's just, I yeah, that. it's so good. Back in the 20s, episode 20 something during my Halloween series of 2016. And it's a spoopy bottle. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Yeah, this one Night is day, way yellow. If you could just take fall and like shove it up your nose <laughs> <laughs> just, and have that smell of <laughs> that, that's this, this, uh, this is, I'm excited. <laughs> We're going to first start off with Oktoberfest Lagerham from Yellowhammer. Um, we already admired the gorgeous yellow color. This yeah, smell is yeah. very wine -ish. Yeah, it has a wine-ish smell. Ooh, like grapes and... Okay, I'm excited. Let's, let's go ahead and go. Cheers. Absolutely. Mm, it tastes completely different than it smells. Yep. Wow. But that's not a bad thing. No, at not all. at all. This not is all. a surprise and a fun time all the way through. Nothing really overpowers anything. For me personally, on my mm -hmm. palate, but it's all just kind of well-rounded. Like, you can pick up on that malt body. Mm -hmm. I pick up, it almost tastes slightly grainy. Yeah. Uh, it's got a nice little caramel, like a light caramel mm -hmm. sweetness on the not back. Not boozy. Not boozy at all. This would be a very, re this would be a really good uh, mm. social drinking beer. Like, you could eat some a cheese tray. I don't, I'm just getting a super wine feel from this. Like Yeah, no, no, like yeah, because it smells like, like I've just breaks. now like kind of got into wine. Ooh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, but I'm more That's of a, a dark wine over a sweet wine kind of person. Same, I like dry. Yeah, dry, dry all, all the way. Dry all the just, way. <laughs> I don't know if every beer is like this. But they pride themselves on taking uh, European style beers and adding almost a southern twang to it, mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah, I can't wait to see what else happens for me. So this is starting off good. Exactly. We're going to move on to, we're going to save a little bit of this so we can go Absolutely. back and compare. Absolutely. We're going to go to Cahaba's uh, Oktoberfest Ale here. It said on the website 6.9%, um, so I'm not really sure. Like I said, it's not on the can. For some reason, yeah. this still smells like grapes. Yeah. Like a mixed fruit. Pack, mm -hmm. maybe for whatever reason and uh our dark amber yeah. orangey almost late color. sunset orange almost yes. a brownish orange well let's just go in and uh, see what she yeah, says yeah like. cheers. cheers absolutely it, this one's a little bit harder to swallow it's more um tingy and bright almost um the carbonation is up a little bit more it's not as easy to just kind of Chug. It tastes colder, I guess. Yeah. These are all the same temperature, obviously. It's almost slightly, not, not a negative way, but it's almost slightly astringent. It lingers, like, mm -hmm. where this one's kind of calm and just really mellow from front to back. This one 
really opens up more once it's gotten to the back and once you're already done with the sip. Because now I'm getting yeah. more as, it, as I'm sitting here. It kind of warms up in your mouth and uh, develops the longer you let it linger. But it does have more of a thicker bread taste. Mm -hmm. um, and I can feel a, a burp building up from this. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> Got it. <laughs> yeah! I think this would be really good to let some brat sit in mm. and then grill with. I think that would be really That's good. That's a great idea. Now for the fun part, the pumpkin beer. Like this tablecloth. So <laughs> Dogfish Head, uh, Melton Delaware. This is a very clear, like filtered, awesome beer right now. That's when you've got like money in all your <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Allspice, nutmeg, brown sugar, Meat. This smells yeah, like this meat. Yeah, this is. It smells. It's just like a gourd, like just a mm. just just bleh into a in, in a very good way, not in a bad way. I don't know. No. Like that's, yeah. that's a hard one out. Oh, it's well rounded. Let's go in. Let's oh, go man. into Let's it. Let's do it. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Woo. Not as um robust as I thought it would be, but it doesn't taste like a candle, which is the positive, because that's what, you know, I hate pumpkin beers that, that, yeah. that, that taste like how Hobby Lobby smells. Yes, exactly. Very light alcohol warmth. Like she said, it does not taste adjunky or gimmicky at all. If you really actually like pumpkin, not your pumpkin spice lattes, yeah. not anything, like this is straight up like, Pumpkin, like, like this. the seeds too. Yeah, I think it's, that, okay. it's got that yeah. roasted. Like if you put some seeds in the oven. Yes. The guy behind hmm. uh, Dr. Shed, he talked about how up in Delaware they have the Pumpkin Chunkin Festival. That's where uh -huh. if you've ever seen it on TV. That's they catapult the pumpkins Ooh. across. Uh, they brewed a beer for that in a contest, and they were like, "What is this?" They're like, pump, "They're pumpkin ale." And they're like, oh, "We got a winner because yeah. it was it was so pumpkiny for them, and yes. so it's been a flagship for them. It comes out every time around this year." Now I think it's time for us to rank from our favorite to least favorite. But honestly, I kind of feel like all these are my favorite, but I just got to pick a least favorite. Uh oh, Absolutely. oh we got a I'm kitty. A wild in the house. gozer. Wild orange kitty. Depends on the beer and the flavors, but honestly, all these followed each other really well. Yeah, they all kind of all complement each other really mm -hmm. well. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, but last for me is going to be the pump, the pumpkin. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Just because I mean it's super good, but um, compared to the other two, like so now I'm down to these two between first and second. But mm -hmm. but what's your last? My last would be the Cahaba Oktoberfest, only okay. because it has a, slor a slight more alcohol burn to it. Mm -hmm. It it would definitely wouldn't be something sociable for me. I would have maybe one. Uh, be more of a cooking beer for yeah, me in the fall. That's uh, fair for me, but uh, nothing against it. It's a solid beer. Yeah, I absolutely. just uh, it, amongst these three, uh, that would be the last one for me. Yeah. Um. So second place for me is going to be Cahaba. Okay. So I All agree right. with you putting that in third, just because it is more tingy. It's got kind of that dry bread flavor. Um. What's second for you? This might surprise any friends of mine that know me. Uh. Actually, the pumpkin. Oh, okay. Would be number two for me. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, which is hard because I know. Uh, yeah. The pumpkin for me is when I think pumpkin beer, I want to I want to taste that pumpkin meat. Yeah. Uh, this has got a lot of well-rounded uh, ingredients that don't kind of don't really take over more than one or the other. It's very clean, mm -hmm. balanced beer. Uh, it's definitely more so pumpkin. So if you're expecting a desserty one. You probably you might not like this at That's all. That's a good point. Yeah. But uh, I want to go uh, Dogfish Head Pumpkin is number two. Second. So I guess. So yeah. Guess so the first obvious. place. Yellow Hammer. Yellow Hammer <laughs> kills it oh again. Oh my gosh! Uh, so good. It's it's good to see. I think this. And I may be wrong. I think this is the first time it's been canned. Mm, okay. I think it's just That'd been. Be awesome. I may be wrong. Yellow Hammer, you can correct me if you want to. Leave us a comment. Leave us a comment. It's all sound. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, no, it's just the Yellowhammer one, uh, mm -hmm. though it's, slight, it's slightly less boozy than the rest of them, it is way more balanced. Yeah. Uh, it's very sociable. If I was in any bar that had this that served a liter, <laughs> uh, I would order a liter of this yes. and drink this and just drink, just prost the night mm -hmm. away. This is a fantastic beer. Uh, cheers to Yellowhammer for creating a fantastic brew. They keep killing it. And uh, yeah, that's my number one. I agree. Now it's time for topics of the day. Ever since I was a kid, I was always drawn to Halloween. 
uh, the idea of dressing up as whatever you want to be and going mm-hmm. to random strangers' doors and getting <laughs> candy. That mm-hmm. was that always was like free candy. I'm gonna eat as much candy until I poop candy. Yes. But uh, <laughs> as I got older, I kind of looked into more of the traditions. I love the season, man. It's this one cool, crisp time of year. Yes. Where. I watch horror movies all the time, but it's an excuse to watch them. Uh, going into a haunted attraction with friends and paying people to scare you. <laughs> it, it's, it, it, it's so crazy yeah. to think that we do that. Yeah. Uh, the food, uh, the atmosphere, of course, decorating. Uh, you should see his house. It's amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it's getting there. I've got it's a little awesome. bit to go. I'm particularly <laughs> picky. Don't love But uh, <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like for a while, Halloween kind of like after, I hate to make a really dark note for a moment, but after 9-11, and kind of Halloween dwindled for a while, yeah. but we're starting to see it kind of come back, and I, I really attribute that to a lot of people my age that grew up in the 80s loving horror movies are now somehow involved, whether that's just uh, making their own t-shirts through licensing of uh, stuff that they grew up and loved, uh, like Fright Rags, Cavity Colors, Terror Threads. There's more Halloween horror movies coming out. They're actually really good, which was because for a while we had the Saw movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, Nothing against yeah, yeah. those, but like I'm not a big torture porn oh. kind of guy. It's just so cool to see horror back in the limelight and things that I loved as a kid are now like in the forefront and very, very in your face, but not like <laughs> shoved down your throat. And uh, I just don't think Halloween lasts long enough. So I think that's like yeah. right toward, like I think it's right after my birthday, which is early September, mm. that I'm like... Yeah, uh, I uh, have a slight blog. It's more so just uh, if you use Letterboxd, uh, it's where you can check in and do movie reviews. I turn into my movie review for now. I'm still trying to kind of figure out what I want to do. I'm mm-hmm. leaning more toward a podcast in a sense. Uh, I counted out 10 weeks before the release of the new Halloween movie coming out mm-hmm. uh, October 19th. Uh, I've had my Halloween retrospective that I've been doing, but nothing beats Halloween, the original, uh, mm-hmm. the original part two. Uh, my second favorite, uh, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, and a lot of people don't like that movie because Michael's not in it, and I think oh, that's okay. stupid. <laughs> because originally Halloween was supposed to be an anthology series to begin with. Okay. Like, it was only going to be, like, the one Halloween movie, and then they were going to do other Halloween movies without Michael, hmm. but something always happened on Hall- Halloween, kind of horror theme that yeah. was different. And cool. they tried that with Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, and it made money. But people crapped on it, but now, 30-something years later, it's found its audience. It's a nice. huge cult following. Uh, it's a really good movie. I've also been doing my 31 Days of Horror. I've been watching a horror movie every day and doing <laughs> a review on it every day. He's so dedicated. I love uh, it. It's, it's ah. keeping me busy with doing reviews <laughs> yeah. so I can keep them out, but also sharpen my skills and get better at it. I have a horror collection, and by no means is it the biggest or the baddest. Uh, really, Halloween, no matter how many decorations you have or don't, uh, no matter what you do Halloween's what's in your heart mm-hmm. and that's what matters most and uh, so don't ever beat yourself up if you don't have all the decorations up that you have or you know right. you think that someone loves it more than you there is no king and queen of Halloween no matter what people tell you it's just what you love but uh, these are some of the movies I own uh, these are some of my favorite to watch around of course there's uh, Halloween 3 Seasons of the Witch uh, <laughs> I highly recommend this one it's a great little movie it's, it's weird uh, the idea of kids getting these masks that are super popular from uh, an Irish uh, toy company in Northern California, and then they uh, all die. <laughs> so, uh, but you can get into it, it's crazy, it's a lot of fun. Of course, there is the uh, classic Disney's Hocus yes. Pocus. Which that uh, is all over Spirit Halloween now. They oh, a, like they actually did a good job. The, the no, dresses yeah. look nice. Like I don't know who dress up as that. It's all. Oh yeah, there's this is classic. It's by no means it's very uh, child friendly. It's a great introduction into horror. I know friends of mine joke about it. It's a horror movie, but uh, it's really fun. Uh, everyone, want, everyone I know loves Hocus Pocus. Yeah. It's even though it was in the early '90s and Disney didn't have any faith in it and released it in July. Mm. Yeah, it wouldn't last long in theaters. Wow. I remember watching the theaters and then like it's gone. Disney did not have faith <laughs> okay. in it. But now it's the same thing as Halloween 3. It has a cult following. It's still one of the top selling Blu-rays yes. from Disney. Uh, it's a good time. Sweet. Mm, speaking of anthology, uh, one of the best. Yeah. I, Trick or Treat. Yeah. This is a movie that was supposed to come out from Warner Brothers. They mm. had no faith in it because 
the Saw movies were taking over October. Mm -hmm. And if I could go back in time and find a way to release this in theaters, this would have whooped <laughs> Saw's ass at the box office. This is a great film if you can find this. Uh, it's worth the purchase. Uh, if you like anthology horror now, if you don't know what that is, really quick, it's a movie that has three to four short stories with a wraparound, which oh, cool. is uh, a wraparound is either something that happens in the beginning that wraps around the end or can bring all of it to kind of together. As I grew up as a kid, I love the Universal Monster movies. Uh, I love monsters in general. They're very, uh, they're, they're really misunderstood. And the ones that are evil, not all the time, but most times are a product of those that created them. One of my favorite Universal Monster movies, just the atmosphere, from beginning to end, it still gets to me to this day, is uh, The Wolfman. Hmm. This is one of my favorites. And I own most of the Universal, the original. There's lots of other ones. Uh, fun fact for those of you that are Marvel fans, uh, the Universal Monster movies were actually the first original cinematic universe. When the, the great Abbott Costello meets uh, Frankenstein or Frankenstein meets Wolfman, they found this way, way ahead of their time to cross over these films and these Ooh. characters meet each other. And it's always, and, and some are better than others, but <laughs> you still appreciate it because it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, The Wolfman, my, one of my favorite Universal Monster movies. Sweet. This is my favorite horror movie. Ooh, of all time? Of all like, time. Right, uh, as and it's not particularly okay. the scariest horror movie, but it's a product of the 80s. It's the atmosphere. Mm. It's, I think, one of the coolest genre films. Nothing beats the original Fright Night oh. for me. This is a great film. <sighs> Everything from practical effects uh, to how cool... The, the the vampire Jerry is with a vampire named Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. But it happening in any neighborhood and some kid that no one believes in that this is there's something evil going on next door. Mm -hmm. But the villain coming over to his house one night and giving him a chance and telling him, Look, you leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't. One of the main protagonists that helps out uh, Brewster is uh, Peter Vincent. Uh, which is uh, a fun little, yeah, which is a fun little mix of a couple of horror icons. Uh, last and not least, uh, every now and again you have to watch something that's batshit insane. <laughs> and no yeah. matter how much you talk about it or try to explain it to someone, mm -hmm. the only way you can kind of get your point across is just to show them. <laughs> True. Um, so for me, it's House. Or Hasu for if ja what Jaws did for the ocean, he wanted to do for houses. <laughs> and uh, the best tagline on this, uh, on the back of this, is a a psychedelic ghost tale, a stream of consciousness bedtime story, an episode of Scooby Doo as directed by Mario Bava. I will just tell you one point in this film: some some man turns into a pile of bananas. Each character doesn't have a name. Uh, the girls in the movie are named after what they are, what their attributes are and stuff. Interesting. So, and, is it in uh, English or is it dubbed? Oh no, or? it's okay. it's it's. You gotta read it. <laughs> okay, you gotta read it. But it is. <laughs> no, I love it. It is very. It being late seventies, it. I almost feel like and I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like it influenced a lot of other horror films like Evil Dead and. Uh, it definitely borrowed from a, from Italian horror, the bright Technicolors and stuff. Just watch House. These are yeah, these sound all like just watch House. Solid uh, ass movies. So, but yeah, I had, I've been doing Thirty One Days of Horror. Some movies I haven't watched at all. Mm -hmm. I've never like for the first time ever I watched Psycho. So my brother is a tattoo artist. Uh, he runs a tattoo shop in uh, Rainbow City here in in, in, in the Gadsden area. Tomahawk Tattoo. Uh, Tomahawk. We have Tasman. He did last year for me. I'm a huge Michael Myers fan, obviously. I'm wearing a Halloween shirt here. Yes, very uh, Did a Michael Myers tattoo, which is great because it's a blessing and a curse. It's it's a great, wonderful tattoo that I love. And a lot of people feel it's necessary to look at my tattoo, but when they look, they don't use their eyes. They like to just take their hands and touch me. It's just oh. the most soul crushing thing is when people are like, "That's a rad Jason tattoo," you yeah. got. and I'm like, oh, "It's Michael Myers. It's not Jason." <laughs> I have a a werewolf wedding photo tattoo that I need to get touched up. I got when I was younger. Uh, but uh, I think for me in horror movies, uh, it stemmed from when I was a kid and uh, I wasn't really allowed to watch it. And when mm -hmm. I did have anything horror, whether it was a Fangoria magazine or something, I had to kind of keep it under wraps Ooh. or it was contraband. Uh, <laughs> so when I moved back in with my dad and he remarried, uh, his second wife was about horror movies or would let me watch them. And 
it just felt like something I wasn't supposed to do, mm-hmm. but I could, and I ate it up. In my late teens, I got away from it for a while because I was just trying to figure out me as a high school. Sure. And then in sure. my early, mid-20s, I started slowly getting back into it, and now I'm in my mid, almost mid-30s, <laughs> and uh, I'm obsessed Thank you so much for watching the second episode in the Halloween series of the best month of the world. And of course, thank you so much, Justin, for being on today's episode with all your movie knowledge and of course being on. She's amazing. A podcast hopefully will be coming. We'll get more content. In the near future. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a, uh, I wouldn't call it a New Year's resolution, but I would call it something (laughs) I'm working on. So. And of course, you know, he knows all about beer, so maybe, you know, come on my channel. Oh, no, it'll be, yeah, yeah, it'll be like a definitely drink and talk about yeah. movies, so. Yeah, uh, movies, beer, all the good things. I guess, I hope that all you boils and ghouls Ooh. have a great Halloween. Nah, Sherry's shaking her <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, and remember, life is too short to drink bad beer.